Hi and welcome back to my channel. In today's topic we're going to talk about um, uh, viral illnesses that could mimic or even be mistaken for the COVID-19 virus. I will give you symptoms and treatment plan and information about when to seek medical attention. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Nikisha Kraft. I'm a family nurse practitioner and a health coach. And on this channel, we talk everything health. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you can be updated when new videos are available. Let's get to it. So I think we are all aware that we're going through a national pandemic, right? It's been almost a year now since we've been going through this COVID-19, you know, and some people would call it this COVID-19 nightmare, really. And I think the general public, are, it, we're pretty much, you know, educated on what COVID-19 is, um, the symptoms that we may experience, you know, how we can, you know, contract the virus and some treatment plans that are available, um, you know, for the COVID-19 currently. Um, but it is a, a new and a dangerous virus. As of today, with me doing this um, video, over 15 million people in the United States have been, you know, infected with this virus, and um, more than 292,000 deaths have occurred. And um, we've recently gone to one of the most deadliest day in America, where over 3,000 deaths in one day. And so, yes, this is still wreaking havoc on our country and literally on the world. So. It is spreading rapidly across our country and across the world. It is spread mainly through respiratory droplets that are deposited on the mucous membrane, such as the nose and the mouth. And it is spread through um, close contact from person to person and also uh, close physical contact, people that are within you know, six feet of each other. And people who are infected with this virus um, can not show any symptoms or be asymptomatic and they are still able to infect others. And so, um, yes, this is a, a dangerous virus and unfortunately we're still, um, you know, trying to manage and, and prevent and get through it and hopefully, you know, we will get a hold of it um, very soon. So I will quickly go over how the COVID virus is spread. Um, it, is a, um, it is spread mainly through respiratory droplet. Um, and when those respiratory droplets are deposited on the mucous membrane of others, the virus is spread that way. And so it's spread through close contact, when you being in a close proximity with someone, that's why we mentioned being six feet away from people, social distancing, um, because the virus is spread through close contact. It also is spread through respiratory um, or airborne you know, droplets. So if you cough, sneeze, or just talk in close proximity with others, you're spreading the virus that way. The mucus you are spreading um, respiratory droplets that can then be inhaled and through the nose or the mouth and the person can get infected that way. It is also spread by contaminated surfaces by you coughing, sneezing, or even coughing in your hands or blowing your nose and then touching a surface such as a computer or a desk. Then another person could come along and utilize that same computer or that desk and therefore the virus can be transferred to them. And um, and the main point I want to drive home, you know, as we discuss these different viral illnesses is, you know, when, when is it, you know, um, significant enough for you to seek, you know, medical advice or to, you know, go to the emergency room. And, you know, the CDC advised that if you're having trouble breathing, if you have persistent pain or pressure on your chest, if you have a new um, onset of confusion, uh, ability, inability to um, stay awake, or or be awakened or any bluish discolorization of your lips or your face um you know this discolorization could mean that you're not having enough you know circulation of oxygen throughout your body or circulation of oxygenated blood throughout your body and the new confusion or the inability to be aroused um, could also indicate signs of a stroke um, which is a common you know uh, adverse effect or complication of the COVID-19 virus. Even younger, you know, adults, they're finding that they're having these, um, you know, stroke-like symptoms. And um, some of the first sign of that is changes in the mental status or in speech, um, where people just seem, you know, confused all of a sudden, or they're un unable to, to talk or, or speak as they usually do. And so it's very important to be aware of these symptoms. If you're having trouble breathing um, or pressure on your chest, that could mean that, you know, you're having pneumonia setting in, especially if you've been running a high fever, if you're having any cough with copious secretions such as greenish 
you know, yellow secretions. It could mean that pneumonia is setting in. And definitely we want you to seek emergency help there so that you can get the proper treatment because your um, chance of recovery will be greater the sooner you get um, medical treatment. So the two most common viral illnesses that, you know, you know, emergency rooms, urgent care, family practice um, are usually dealing with, you know, this time of year during the winter season is the common cold and the flu. And in today's topic, I'm going to talk about these two and compare them to the COVID-19 virus, because you will see that there is a lot of commonality between these three viruses. What is the common cold? The common cold is common. That's why it's called the common cold. It is a very um, frequent res upper respiratory illness that occur during the winter months. And it is caused by a viral infection um, of your nose and your throat or the upper respiratory tract. It is usually harmless, although it may not feel that way. You can feel pretty yucky when you have the common cold. Um, but it, many types of virus can cause this you know, illness. But the main virus is the rhinovirus or the respiratory syntel virus. The res respiratory syntel virus or RSV usually affects younger children. And you know, for children um, six months and younger, we're very concerned during the winter months of them getting the respiratory syntel virus because it can become very you know, respiratory compromised pretty quickly. And so if you have a child who's not feeling good, who may have a cough, an infant, and running a fever, uh, definitely even from age zero to three, you know, fever is a no-no of over 100.3 in a young baby is a no-no. So you definitely wanna seek medical advice to rule out respiratory syntel virus or any other type of bacterial infection in, in infants. And definitely if you have, you know, younger children who are even in daycare age range, you want to make sure that you get them, you know, checked out because respiratory syntel virus and even the rhinovirus is very, you know, prevalent in, you know, school age and um, kids that are attending daycare um, during this winter months. And then just for the general, you know, adult population, the rhinovirus is a, is a very common virus that can spread rapidly um, from person to person through, once again, respiratory droplets. And so um, it is one of the most common, you know, viral infection during this winter month. So what are the symptoms of the common cold? Um, if you look at this, you know, you know, guy right here, he's pretty miserable to tell you the truth. And if you look at the symptoms, guess what? A lot of them are pretty similar to the COVID-19 symptoms. Uh, you may have some headache, you may feel tired, you may have fever, a runny nose, a cough, a sore throat, or a body ache. And I will tell you, all of these symptoms are also symptoms of COVID-19. The difference is you didn't see a loss of taste or smell in this. You didn't see nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Definitely if you're younger um, than, you know, six months, or if you're older than age 65, if you're elderly, then you are always in this risk of having a, a more difficult time with the common cold um, virus and may be at risk for having, you know, more severe symptoms or um, having a, a more difficult time, you know, recovering from the symptoms of the common cold. And so, um, yeah, the symptoms of the common cold and the COVID virus are pretty similar, except for a couple that I've listed before, like the um, the changes in smell and taste and the nausea, vomiting, and the diarrhea. So when should you see your um, doctor uh, if you have the common cold? Well, if you're having symptoms such as a fever greater than 101.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 38.5 degrees Celsius, if this fever is lasting more than five days and is, you know, or you have fever-free moments where fever goes away and then it's returning, especially if you've been using acetaphenamine, Tylenol, or maybe Motrin, and the fever is just not going away. If you have shortness of breath, increased shortness of breath, some wheezing, some sore throat, even headache or sinus pressure, um, you know, if you look at this picture, this uh, fellow here is having a hard time. Um, usually, by the time you get to this level, you might have some copious secretions from your nose, maybe greenish yellow in color. You may be coughing up some lectin sputum with, um, or greenish color sputum. You might, um, you know, just be very congested. Maybe you might even have some pain in your ear uh, because some of the complication of a viral infection um, which are, are, are bacterial infection could be otitis media which is an infection in the ear from excessive fluid in the ear uh, it can be from a sinus infection from excessive um, 
mucus buildup and uh, in the sinuses and then it could also uh, be from a lung infection like pneumonia or even bacterial bronchitis that require you to be on antibiotics bacteria likes a warm moist environment and so the longer you have symptoms of the common cold the longer you have you are congested or you got mucus built up whether it be in the nose or in the respiratory tract that's the environment where bacteria can grow and the viral infection can then be complicated and becomes more of a bacterial infection and we do not treat viral infection with antibiotics it, it's just not a supported evidence-based practice but when patients come to me and they're miserable from the cold and really and truly I see no sign of a bacterial infection they want antibiotic because they feel like it's gonna make them feel better and this is why it's important to seek your medical you know seek out your medical provider if you're having these symptoms so they can fully assess you and and, and evaluate whether or not you need to be put on antibiotics or um, whether they'll just give you maybe some decongestant or some other supportive treatment that can help you manage the symptoms. Now let's talk about the flu. The flu is another upper respiratory virus um, that is um, usually very common this time of year. It affects your lungs, your nose, and your throat. Um, the differences um, with the common cold is that the flu is very deadly, especially in high-risk groups. And actually, when the coronavirus first came on scene, um, you know, people used to compare it with the flu. But the coronavirus is much more virulent and deadly than the um, the flu the, the flu that we you know commonly deal with every year. And so the high risk groups usually they, they are the same as the high risk group for the um, coronavirus. It's usually children who are six months and younger, um, elderly, you know, patients 65 years and older, anyone with a compromised immune system, uh, or people might who might have underlying lung disease such as asthma, um, COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or patients that might be, um, you know, might have had history of a lung cancer, have a lumpectomy, part of their lung removed, or maybe undergoing chemotherapy right now but there are some patients that are taking immunosuppressive drugs for different um, autoimmune you know diseases um, so the high-risk group is usually you know the same or is the same for the flu and also for the coronavirus um, the, the difference too with the flu and the coronavirus is that the flu can be prevented through the influenza vaccine. It's not a hundred percent cure. I think if the general population is, you know, um, vaccinated, it will be about sixty percent effective for the whole population. Um, but you can be vaccinated um, for the uh, the flu virus, and the flu virus is also caused by uh, a different virus. It's caused from the influenza virus, while the common cold is caused from you know several different viruses, including the rhinovirus. And so, you know, these are just some differences. And of course, the coronavirus is caused from you know the SARS-CoV-2 virus, um, uh, you know, when compared to the, um, the flu virus. So here on this slide, you can see a comparison between the common cold and the flu. And as you can see, the symptoms are pretty much the same. However, the flu is more of a, a severe illness. And um, once again, it is a very de deadly virus. And so you will have more severe symptoms. You will feel sicker uh, with the flu than you will with the common cold. So your fever will be also higher in the, in the flu. And if you have the flu virus, the onset of the flu can come on pretty rapidly. Um, you can have, you know, pretty severe, you know, generalized body aches and pain, and the headaches are pretty common. Um, I, you know, my experience, you know, with the flu, in flu virus is that patients that usually come in with this virus i can usually tell right away if they have the flu just because of the severity of their symptoms and you know they can barely haul themselves out of bed just to come to the doctor's office and so yes it, they're they're usually pretty sick And so on this slide, I just show you the comparison between all three viruses, the coronavirus, COVID-19 virus, the common cold, and the flu. And the only symptoms, once again, that stands out, and, and, and of course, there's plenty of other symptoms of the COVID-19 virus, but the main ones that I took off the CDC, the Center of Disease and, and Control website, are the ones that are listed here. The, one, the, 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 the only ones that are not common between all three of these viruses are the new loss of smell and taste, the nausea, the vomiting, and the diarrhea. So everywhere where you see a, a face with a mask are all of the areas where the symptoms are very much the same. And so this is like a medical nightmare, you know, uh, this time of year for any doctor's office, for any emergency room, for any urgent care, for any workplace, for any school. And this is why 
you know, everyone is kind of like on alert and panicked about this because the symptoms of the common cold and the flu are so similar to those of the coronavirus. And we just cannot know sometimes whether or not you have the coronavirus or the common cold um, or the flu unless we do testing. And that's why I am definitely an advocate for more testing. Because if you present to my office with these symptoms, I would definitely want to rule out the coronavirus. So I would like to test you to make sure you don't have that. I would also test you for the flu because I, you know, the flu is deadly too. And we want to make sure you don't have that. If it's a younger child, you know, I'll, I'll do those tests, but we can also test for things like RSV um, to make sure they don't have the respiratory syntel virus. So let's talk treatment. Um, so if you're diagnosed with a common cold, it is a viral illness and usually um, with viral illnesses, your immune, your own immune system has to fight against the virus. And once again, we do not treat viral illnesses with antibiotic. So our recommendations for you is supportive care. It's to rest, to hydrate yourself, to try to eat as healthily as possible. And uh, you can take some analgesics such as acetaminophen or Tylenol and also Motrin to help alleviate some of the symptoms like headache or the fever. And then we're also monitoring you for any um, complication of the common cold, especially if you're a high risk patient, if you're younger than six months uh, old, or if you're greater, if you're older than 65 years old, because uh, the elderly and, and, and infants or younger children are more at risk for complications of uh, the common cold, which could lead to um, infection, secondary infections such as uh, uh, otitis media, which is the ear infection, or sinusitis, infection of the sinuses, um, or uh, pneumonia. Of course, we want to make sure we are monitoring for that. Um, so if you're um, diagnosed with the flu, the influenza virus, then if you are able to come into the doctor's office within three days of the onset of your symptoms, we can treat you with Tamiflu. This is an antiviral drug that works um, to uh, help to halt the virus and therefore decrease the severity of the symptoms you might have and also duration, how long you may be sick with the, the flu. But otherwise it is a virus and your own immunity uh, defense mechanism has to fight against the virus. And so you still need to rest, hydrate, you know, um, boost your immune system with vitamin C and you know drink a lot of water eat healthily and um you know so your body could fight against the virus and the tamiflu you know in my experience i've worked pretty effectively when patient can tolerate it some patient reports very significant um adverse effects gastrointestinal um you know you know disorders or adverse effects and they just are not able to tolerate the tamiflu and you know but for others who are able to do that they usually do pretty well and if you are diagnosed with the coronavirus a lot of people have mild symptoms or they're asymptomatic so the only recommendation is for you to rest again to drink um, lots of fluids to take some vitamin c vitamin d and to boost your immunity and also to quarantine so not to spread the virus to your family member or um, to the general public and if your symptoms are moderate to severe then you know your doctor might monitor you more closely if you have asthma or COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease they might say um, step up on your treatment plan if you're having a little bit more difficulty breathing or if you're having some wheezing they might say take albuterol or they might order you some, some steroids um, to help, um, you know, improve your breathing. And they'll also monitor you to see if there's any um, advance in symptoms where they might need to hospitalize you. Of course, patients with severe, you know, symptoms are hospitalized and they're treated with um, oxygen therapy. They're also given maybe IV antibiotics if they are found to have pneumonia. They're treated with steroids to help them breathe. And um, in severe cases, they might be put on a mechanical ventilator to help them breathe. 
um, but that's usually in very severe cases. And there are a lot of other experimental treatments. Not all of them are available to the public right now, to my understanding. But there are monoclonal antibodies, like what President Trump you know, received when he was sick with the coronavirus, um, such as Regeneron. And what it is, is um, it mimics your body immune response to the coronavirus and therefore you know, gives you reinforcement. It boosts your body's immunity to help to fight against the virus. And so your symptoms may become less and the duration of, this, of the, um, the coronavirus will also be, be less. So you'll be sick for a shorter period of time or you may recover uh, more quickly. And there's also remdesivir, which is an antiviral. And this works similar to the Tamiflu where it, it halts the virus and therefore, you know, prevents more replication of the virus in your body and therefore can decrease the severity of the illness and how long you may be sick with the the virus, the coronavirus. So I'm sure there's a lot of other experimental treatment, um, but the ones I listed are the main ones that they've been talking about in the news. I know all hands have been on deck and there are many people who are working tirelessly both day or night to try to come up with an effective treatment for the coronavirus. And you know, at you know the time I'm doing this video, there is actually two vaccines one from Pfizer and the other from Moderna, Moderna that will probably be coming available very shortly. And that is wonderful news because this will help us to, um, you know, you know, halt the virus, the spread of the virus and hopefully eradicate it. And we really need that because we're having so many deaths right now. The virus is still spreading across this country and so many people are dying and, you know, healthcare workers are becoming exhausting. It is very tiresome. And very emotionally you know draining to just see people die day after day after day especially people that were otherwise healthy and would be fine uh, if it wasn't for the coronavirus and our job is to help people and this virus makes us feel helpless because we're doing everything we can to help people and they're still dying and so this vaccine it's just wonderful it's a wonderful wonderful accomplishment that we have in this country to be able to come up with a vaccine that is about 95 percent effective and i'm so hopeful for what it can do to save so many lives and so once again i just want to you know really ask everyone to please follow the guidelines um you want to make sure that you are wearing your mask and wearing it properly um over your nose and your mouth that you are um hand washing or hand sanitizing as many times as you can that you are social distancing at least six feet apart from others, that you are um, cleaning surfaces at your job, or your workplace, or even your home, and that you are quarantining when necessary. Because prevention right now is the only cure that we have. And frankly, healthcare workers are so drained or so overworked. And really, you know, this is a big emotional toll that is taken on our healthcare system. And we need this, you know, saving grace, this vaccine right now. And and so I'm so encouraged by what's going to come out, for, you know, probably by the end of the year or, or definitely um, by the new year. And, and so please follow the guideline. If the Department of Health call you and tell you that you're suspected of having been exposed to the virus and they needed to quarantine, please listen and quarantine because you know, the life you save might be your own or a family member. And definitely, you know, you can save many other lives in your community if you just follow the guidelines and the recommendation um, that are set out there to help to keep everyone safe. Um, so I hope this helped to clarify some of the information between the common cold, the flu and the coronavirus and even other viruses such as the rhinovirus. It's very difficult, like I mentioned before, to really decipher, you know, based on the symptoms that are so similar. Um, but you know, what I want to stress is that if you're having any of these symptoms, just call your doctor, let them know. They can um, arrange for you or tell you where you can um, get tested for the um, coronavirus or the flu virus, um, or if it's a baby, maybe the uh, respiratory syndrome virus. So they can rule out those diagnoses. Um, because the coronavirus is so deadly, it is not like the common flu or the common cold. Um, it is much more deadlier. And if we don't eradicate it and halt it in its track, we could be dealing with this pandemic in 2021 and 2022. And so we have to do, everybody has to do their part so that we can get out of this um, health crisis as quickly as possible and 
uh, as safely as possible. So thank you again for listening. As always, it's always been my pleasure to uh, provide you with this information that will hopefully, you know, allow you to make changes in your life um, to improve your health. So until next time, take care of you and I will see you in the next video.